Yavapai Broadcasting and the City of Cottonwood proudly present Inside Cottonwood, an inside look at the decisions and issues of the City of Cottonwood. Brought to you by Arizona Smile Designers. According to the U.S. Department of Labor, more than 28 million parents of school-aged children are employed, including 23 million who work full-time. 15 million children are on their own after school, and more than 1 million of these are ages 6 to 11. Of all the surveyed respondents, parents state that they would enroll their child in an after-school program if it were offered. Good morning and welcome to Inside Cottonwood. My name is Jason Little, Recreation Manager for the City of Cottonwood. With me today, I have Miss Brittany Lawler. Thanks for coming on, Brittany. Thanks for having me. Uh, Brittany, uh, when I bring someone on the show, uh, we're going to talk about the after-school program today. And uh, you're the person to talk about when it comes to that because uh, you're the uh, resident expert in our department anyway. But before we get started, I'd like you just to give the audience a brief overview of who you are uh, and how you recently came into your new position with the city and the school district. Okay, well, my name is Brittany Lawler. I've been living in Cottonwood my whole life. I I've been through the, pretty much through the whole system of youth programs that Cottonwood has to offer, and it's really fun to see it all come full circle. I was in the Youth Commission, the Cottonwood Youth Advisory Commission, for five years, and now I'm an advisor in that, which is fun. And I, what was the second part of your? Uh, your most recently uh, okay. acquired position. Okay, I am the Youth Programs Coordinator, which is a shared position with the school district and the city of Cottonwood. So basically what I do is I go out to the school uh, to the Oak Creek School out in Cornville, and I do the PE out there. And then I come to the rec center in the afternoon and I do the after school program in the afternoon. So. That's fantastic. Uh, I don't want to use where we take solace in the fact, but uh, we're really proud of individuals like yourself because I can remember when you and your brother and sister, you guys were really young, you have been more or less in parks and recreation programming since you were what, five or six years old? I actually signed up for basketball when I was four and I was denied the right to go play <laughs> basketball as a little kid. It was soul crushing at the time, but I mean, I understand now why you can't have four year olds running around with six year olds. <laughs> I bet you really do understand now, considering the fact that you're also a PE teacher. Yeah. And now I also understand that you participate in the uh, adult league programming too. Mm -hmm. now I, that you're... I actually just got done with a softball game last night at nine o'clock. <laughs> oh, really? So it's, they're long days, but they're all fun and it's all stuff that's worthwhile and I love to do. And I'm looking to do the volleyball in the winter too, so. Did you guys win last night? We did not, but we had fun, which is... Who'd you play? Angie's House. Angie's House. Yeah, Are it's they, like uh, the A++ team in the A League. and. So it's broken up in A and B, mm -hmm. and you guys are in the A League, huh? Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's too funny. We'll get into that a little later. That was an inside <laughs> joke that we'll share with the audience here in a little bit. Anyway, uh, something that you, uh, you didn't expound upon, Brittany, and I'd like to get into it before we uh, segue into the uh, after-school program. You're also going to school. Yeah, I'm a full-time student. I want to go into education and be a special education teacher. It's actually a double major with elementary education. So I can really take that and apply it how I'd like. And special education is always something that I've been passionate about since I was in middle school. And it's something that I've always wanted to do. So that's what I really want to go into. So let's get this straight then. Uh, you split your time by going to Oak Creek School from 8 in the morning till? Uh, 12. Till 12. Then you come to the Recreation Center around 2. Mm -hmm. And you work until? Until 6. Until 6. And then you go to the softball fields and you play <laughs> until 9. Yeah, and on my lunch break uh, between 12 and 2, <laughs> I have my own college classes that I have to go to. And then from 9 to midnight, you finish your college classes and then you go to sleep. Homework. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a schedule. That's, yeah. uh, that's amazing. Uh, how's the after-school program going? It's going really well. The kids are really great. I just love that the numbers are, the ratios are about one to eight, which is really nice. So I get to really build relationships with the kids that are in there, which is a lot of fun. And it's fun just to see different kids come in and like share themselves in different capacities on a daily basis. And no two days have ever been the same between the two the two areas in which I work, no two days are the same. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that's the case. Keeps it really fun. Uh, I've noticed, just because I'm in the, the gym and the recreation center quite a bit between the uh, times of 3 and 4.30 every day, 
I've noticed that numbers have been climbing. I noticed when you first started out, you were having two and three show up right when school began. What are you guys up to on an average now daily? Uh, we're usually about two, eight, like I said, that's our average ratio, but it can fluctuate to anywhere between five and 12, so. Okay, uh, when we uh, had the opening statement, I talked about how of the 15 million kids who go home every day, 8.8, .8, half of them, half the parents would enroll their child in a certified program if one were available in their community. Uh, this one's still gaining traction, it's in its second year. How is this program different than all of the other youth programs out there like the Boys and Girls Club and Buena Vista? It's a flat fee, so when you come in you're going to pay for what you're getting and there's no hidden costs, no memberships, anything required. And it's <clears throat> it's a low ratio program, so the kids are really getting like the help that they need. Like during homework time, I can help every every student in there to my best ability because it's not labor intensive that I have to walk around to 40 kids that need help with their homework and it's really nice that I can have that. And studies have shown when you get a lot of kids like that together, the ones who need the help, they kind of fall through the cracks mm -hmm. because they won't come up and engage the instructor. You know, they'll kind of just sit back and just try to get by that way. Uh, what else makes the program unique? What do the kids get to do in the recreation center that you wouldn't get to do if you were going to Buena Vista or? They, the whole recreation center is open for the after school program. So they get facilitated fun time basically throughout the rec center and we're always going to be with them. If we go to the pool or if we go to the rock wall or the game room or the light wall room or the gym, they're always going to have somebody with them watching them, which is really fun. And we get the recreation center, this beautiful building that a lot of people see the fitness center and they say, oh, that's really nice. And they have a pool and a gym, but we have an after school program too that's a gem within the rec center that students can go to the after school program at a young age and really be able to utilize all of the facilities that the rec center has to offer. It truly is a gem. I, I mean, I, I wish every parent who was looking for a service for their children between the times of three and six would come down and check it out because, I mean, the amenities in that building, fantastic. Yeah. What if you and I had those when we were uh, that age? <laughs> that wasn't our options, was it? Uh, you mentioned the cost briefly. Can you just go over those in a little more detail for the audience? It's one forty a month, uh, $40 a week, or $10 a drop-in day rate, and that is what you're paying. There's no hidden costs. You don't have to be a member of the rec center to use the after-school program, and that includes everything. It includes snack, the amenities, the homework help, the pickup, so everything. What kind of snacks are you talking about? Well, we have, I mean, you can only get the kids to eat so many fruits in a week, <laughs> but we do try to push the healthy stuff, and then we do have like the animal crackers, Cheez-Its, stuff like that. So. so that breaks down to just a little less than $3 an hour if you took full advantage of the program and your child was there from 2.30, 3 o'clock until 6 every yeah. day. And it's really not just babysitting. It's a good program where they're going to go learn cultural like things that they're going to be able to apply and the social aspect is really great because they're with people that are their age and a little bit older or a little bit younger so they're really getting to mesh well with these other students that are different ages. And that's what I like and a lot of programs there's such a wide age range and then if there's not a lot of supervision you know that that can be it can, the, the result I mean you'd like it if you had more control and you had oversight and that's what I really like about the program. Speaking <coughs> of the program uh, next week's fall break. Uh, this is the first time I, I have a child he's six eight and and I'm actually going to bring him three days. Uh, what can I expect? What are the hours? When can I drop him off for this app for the I guess it's a fall break program or what do you call it? It's the fall break and we're here at the rec center, all the breaks, so every half day, every fall break, every winter break, every Memorial Day, uh, we, I'm really excited for fall break because it's fall and all the fun stuff is starting to come to be and like the leaves and stuff, but we're going to be pumpkin carving, we're going to do everything from science experiments to nature walks to garden planting, so we've got a lot of fun stuff planned for this week, for this coming week, and it's the 8th through the 12th. And parents, for parents who are still scrambling right now, what are the hours of 
the fall break program? It's eight to six, so it'd be like a regular drop-off day at a school and then the regular pickup time of the after-school program. Now, do parents need to bring lunch or is lunch included in this? Lunch is provided, so with when you pay, you can just drop your child off and be sure that they are going to be taken care of to the best of our ability for the full week. All right, you mentioned we. You can't do this alone. I know you have help. Who works for you as far as helping with the kids during these programs? I have two really great girls working with me. One is Alexis Knowles and the other is Bailey. She just got hired. She's, we're, we have high hopes for her and they are just as passionate as I am about like getting these kids a really good time throughout the day and that we really want to please the kids because it is a youth program. It's not something that the adult should be in charge of. It's the youth that we want to cater to and they're the ones who have a say in what we do. And the my employees are right on board with me that the kids are the kids are in charge to an extent. Like we do have to do homework. We do have to behave when we walk through the rec center, but everything else is really up to them. That's great. Now what can I expect to pay next week? Uh, is there two questions, two parts? What's the weekly rate and what's a day drop-in rate? It's $90 for the full week or $20 for a drop-in day. Wow, so that breaks down to less than $2 an hour if your child was there from eight to six every mm -hmm. day. Well, uh, Brittany, uh, I can't thank you enough for being on the show. I would like to uh, have you back uh, once we uh, get our youth commission seated because you also are very an intricate part of the Cottonwood Youth Advisory Commission. And I'd like to bring yourself and maybe uh, the newly elected president and vice president on once we actually go through the election process, maybe even next month. That sounds great. But uh, I guess when we come back, uh, we're going to be uh, talking, uh, switching gears a little bit. We're going to be talking to uh, Mr. Ryan Bigelow about youth basketball. And we're also going to talk a little bit about adult volleyball and why Brittany Lawler is in the A-League. Once again, <laughs> that's an inside joke. Uh, Brittany, as we're going to break, can you give the audience maybe just a contact, some contact information if they have any uh, questions about next week's program? Yeah, it's 639-3200, so just call the rec center and ask for Brittany Lawler. We'll see you guys in a few. Meet the team at Arizona Smile Designers, offering complete comprehensive, restorative, and aesthetic dentistry. Dr. Vergara and Dr. Lord specialize in dental health, implants, and cosmetic dental procedures. Expert staff and state-of-the-art equipment bring forth the most from your smile. Dr. Ripplinger conveniently comes to Arizona Smile Designers for oral surgery and complicated procedures. Visit Arizona Smile Designers at 350 South Willard in Cottonwood. Insurance and new patients are welcome. Call 634-8610. Thousands of fires across the United States are caused by careless people. Hi, I'm Fire Marshal Rick Contreras with the Cottonwood Fire Department. The major threat of human-caused fires are from burning debris that get out of control or are improperly extinguished or unattended campfires. Remember that fireworks have no place on our wildlands. Become part of the solution. Learn more about proper fire safety by contacting a local fire department. Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. Jason Little here with uh, our new guest, uh, not a guest, he's been on the show many times, uh, Mr. Ryan Bigelow. He's the uh, Recreation Program Supervisor. Youth programs, adult programs, front desk, game room, child care, uh, pretty much does it all. Anyway, uh, Ryan, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, appreciate it. Uh, Ryan, the reason I brought you on the show today is because uh, we're kind of uh, transitioning. You've been doing a lot of adult sports, uh, especially softball. Now we kind of go into uh, the indoor segment because weather's going to start getting a little cooler outside and uh, we're going to do some youth basketball. Uh, I've been here a long time and you're gaining traction too. Uh, how many years have we been running this youth basketball program? It's, it's, a, it's an important year. It's, this is going to be our 20th season of the City of Cottonwood Youth Basketball League, which is pretty incredible. Time flies when you're having fun, I guess. Um, this is my sixth year of doing it, and uh, you know, really looking forward to it, really looking forward to you know, improving every year. And, um, and I, I hope the kids and the coaches are ready to come back and do it all over again. Now, I understand uh, this is way off topic, but that's kind of the way I am today. Uh, Mingus is having their 20-year class reunion. Oh my goodness. Uh, and that's at the, the casino this weekend. So uh, I went back, looked through uh, some of the uh, records, and uh, back in 1992, the first season we had, 
a little over 100 kids signed up. Wow. So, I mean, in that time, I mean, the granted population's probably Absolutely. doubled since then, so uh, that's what we're looking at. Uh, I know you're probably basing this off of uh, last year and maybe a culmination of everything that you've gathered your past six years of being here and what I've shared with you. But how many teams were in your league last year? Last year we had a total of 20 teams, um, which equals out to be about um, 10 players a team, so about 200 kids last year, which is, um, since I've been here, a, a about average. Um, so I think that's probably something we can expect to see again this year. I know last year we had eight Mighty Mites teams. Um, we had five of the Power Division I boys, uh, four of the Power Division II boys, and then three girls teams, um, and those girls are the 10 to 14 year old girls. So um, hopefully we can get those numbers uh, again this year, if not exceed those numbers. That's, uh, that's great, that's uh, really good news. Now I understand it's not, we're early in the game. That's why we, we wanted to get on here uh, now, because I think it's like you said, I think we talked about it in January last year when we were midway mm -hmm. through the season. When did sign up start? When do they end? How much does it cost? Uh, do you get a break for siblings? Can you give us some of that information? Absolutely. Um, you know, we just uh, began registration. We've got 10 kids registered as of as of yesterday at 5 p.m. Um, uh, registration will end October 26th. Uh, you can sign up at the Cottonwood Recreation Center. That's probably going to be your easiest way. But I also want to let people know that they have the opportunity to sign up online this year as well. Um, we are set up uh, through our active system to take registrations online. So um, cottonwoodaz.gov um, should have a link up there to uh, be able to register online if you don't have the time uh, to make it into the rec center for whatever reasons. Um, we've been able to keep costs low, um, consistently low, uh, which is one of the great things about our program. Um, it's only $35 for a kid. Um, it's $5 off if you're an in-town resident or if you have siblings playing too. So um, we're not going to add up those costs on you. It's, it's going to be affordable, um, and, and hopefully you, you, you feel like at the end of the program you've got a lot of bang for your buck. Speaking of bang for your buck, how many games can a child expect to play? Um, it varies, but uh, typically we have seven to eight games um, for, for these teams and these leagues, um, which, you know, when, when you break it down is, is a great price. They're going to practice twice a week. Um, so they're going to practice twice a week for an hour, play at least one game on the Saturday for an hour. So you're looking at about three hours a week for approximately ten weeks. Um, so, uh, you know, when you, when you break down the, to the dollar, bang for your, we're talking about bang for your buck, um, we feel like in this program, that's exactly what you're getting. Yeah, that's like a dollar ten an hour or something like Pretty that. Pretty incredible. Uh, something, uh, it wasn't a question that we discussed prior to coming on the show, uh, not to blindside you. I attribute it to the success of the volunteer coaches we have in High Desert Youth Football and AYSO. This season, we have to, we have a short time span to get all of the games played because then, of course, we have to segue into adult volleyball. Mm -hmm. But I know that you have made, I don't know, you, you will wait and let these individuals sign up if their football team goes later on. I mean, I know, what's the absolute cutoff date that you can take a registration what without we, impeding? What we do is we actually go into evaluations, as you all know. We, we evaluate all of the players that play in our league. Um, I need to get those players to be evaluated. So the last evaluation is November 10th. Um, anything beyond that, I'm going to have a hard time adding somebody to a roster. Um, but uh, I would say the absolute end cutoff date would be November 10th. But, but of course, if we could, the earlier we can get people in to sign up and register, the more organized we can be, the easier that makes it on the administration um, side of things, the easier it makes it on getting the draft set up, everything get it, getting into place. So when we add kids late, we throw wrinkles in, into uh, wrenches into people's plans. Um, and uh, sometimes that even makes adding kids to teams that already exist, and, and that becomes really hard and really strenuous on the coaches. Yeah, I'm not advocating that in any way. I just know that a lot of times, you know, these football teams, they'll go to the state championship Absolutely. or whatever. Absolutely, and hope they do. Yeah. Uh, where are the games played? Um, we play at various locations, um, but of course we utilize the Cottonwood Recreation Center to uh, the, the full extent that we're able to do there. Um, we have games all morning at, at the Cottonwood Recreation Center, and also, um, the school district has, has worked well with us over the years and we're able to 
um, utilize the middle school for games and hopefully again maybe even this year we can uh, utilize the high school. Same as football, same as soccer. Who coaches in this league? Um, and, and like we discussed prior to, these, this is the heart of the program, our, our volunteer coaches. And I need to emphasize that, that they are indeed volunteer coaches. I know uh, there are parks and recreation departments around the nation that are able to pay some of these people. That's not, what, that's not how we do things. Um, we keep costs down by u utilizing volunteer coaches. Um, and, and that becomes difficult and strenuous on, on, on us to find some of those people. So what we, what we like to do is, is tell people, you know, you don't have to be a basketball genius. You didn't have to play college basketball to be qualified uh, to, to come coach in our leagues, you know. Um, it, we do our best. We'll actually even hold a coach's clinic to um, uh, provide some basic basketball information. But we primarily want, want um, these coaches teaching fundamentals and um, teaching the kids and letting them have some fun out there. Uh, speaking of that, Ryan, uh, it's time for uh, another break, uh, time for people to fill up their uh, coffee. I know it's early in the morning uh, for most. Uh, but anyway, if you're interested in coaching, do they contact you? Yeah, I would, I would say just get a hold of me directly, and I'll, uh, I've got a list already started. I've got some returning coaches that have already contacted me, and, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. But 639-3200 uh, is the number at the Recreation Center if you ask for Ryan Bigelow. Um, I will uh, just talk, talk to you about what we are, our expectations and what we'd like to see, and uh, we'll go from there. The number's on the screen. You guys see it. Ryan Bigelow, R. Bigelow at cottonwoodaz.gov if you're interested in coaching, and we'll be back in a few. Meet the team at Arizona Smile Designers, offering complete comprehensive, restorative, and aesthetic dentistry. Dr. Vergara and Dr. Lord specialize in dental health, implants, and cosmetic dental procedures. Expert staff and state-of-the-art equipment bring forth the most from your smile. Dr. Ripplinger conveniently comes to Arizona Smile Designers for oral surgery and complicated procedures. Visit Arizona Smile Designers at 350 South Willard in Cottonwood. Insurance and new patients are welcome. Call 634-8610. Thousands of fires across the United States are caused by careless people. Hi, I'm Fire Marshal Rick Contreras with the Cottonwood Fire Department. The major threat of human-caused fires are from burning debris that get out of control or improperly extinguished or unattended campfires. Remember that fireworks have no place on our wildlands. Become part of the solution. Learn more about proper fire safety by contacting a local fire department. Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood Parks and Recreation Edition, the show that keeps you in the know of everything happening here in your community in the Verde Valley. My name is Jason Little, Recreation Manager, and here with Ryan Bigelow, talking youth basketball, and we, if we have a few minutes, we'll get into some adult sports as well. When we went to a break, we were talking about the importance of having good quality volunteer coaches. Uh, we've been blessed in the past, similar to football, soccer, and all the other leagues, and uh, we can't thank those who volunteer enough. Uh, Ryan. We briefly touched upon evaluations. When are evaluations held again? Uh, evaluations this season are going to be November 3rd and November 10th. Uh, those, we do those in the morning. Um, we try to, we understand that kids can often be playing in other sports, so um, give them uh, between 9 and noon to swing by the recreation center, come in. Um, depending on how many kids are there, uh, it should take no longer than 20 minutes to get a brief evaluation um, and make sure that. Uh, we're able to, to know that your kid's available, signed up, and ready to go. There's pros and cons, and uh, depending on who you're talking to, what side of the aisle, uh, they'll either be for the way we run the program or they would like to change it. Mm -hmm. And what I'm talking about is team division. We do something different than all of the other leagues out there, more or less. Can you explain how we divide the teams and the draft process a little bit. Absolutely. Um, you know, the reason we continue to evaluate all of the players, um, you know, with no exceptions, we evaluate everyone, is to try to keep the teams as fair as possible. Um, I understand that in other leagues they might uh, continue to, if you played for the Bulls one season, again next season you would play for the Bulls. Um, we redraft, um, we, we reshuffle the deck 
Um, and, uh, you know, there, like you said, there are pros and cons to both ends. We understand that. But uh, I think the biggest pro and what we're looking at doing is uh, try to, trying to avoid the empire building um, and uh, to, to focus on the winning and losing. You know, we want to we have everybody have a fair chance, as fair of an opportunity um, to, to get to know other kids, to play with other coaches, um, and, and to make our league um, a little bit different, but uh, hopefully uh, a little bit more fair and equal as far as wins and losses go. A lot of parents, when they come in, they're probably thinking, this evaluation is redundant. We do it every year. Why do they continue asking us to come back to evaluate a child? Can you explain why we evaluate a child every year? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, it's, it's valuable. Um, you know, A, we, we're not going to remember um, exactly who everybody was from the prior year. Um, and hopefully, and what we see often, is that um, after a season or two of playing in our program, these kids can improve immensely. And um, one evaluation from um, one year doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get the same evaluation the next. Uh, with our coaching, with our games played, um, with the time that these kids are spending in the gym, um, they're, they're not the same player that they were the year before. The last thing we do in the Parks and Recreation Department is rest on our laurels. When you're hanging up the basketballs and getting ready to transition into adult volleyball, what do you hope those players and coaches walked away with as far as goals of the program? What, what do you hope they learned? I, I hope that they, they learn more than just um, basketball. I, I know that team sports in general can teach a lot. Um, I want these kids to learn how to, um, how to succeed, how to cooperate, um, how to fail, how, and how to deal with adversity, things of that nature. Um, there's definitely more to team sports than what's on the scoreboard. And, uh, and I know the coaches will agree that uh, you know, there are ups and downs in a season. Um, but all of those can be construed as a positive experience as long as they're learned from. That's great. Uh, although it's debatable, uh, there's what I consider a lot of lifelong sports that you can play. Uh, some for basketball, it just depends on how your body ages. Uh, but in particular, there's three that I kind of think of low impact, and that mm -hmm. would be swimming, tennis, and volleyball to an extent because in a lot of parks and recreation, parks and recreation agencies, you see a lot of older volleyball leagues. Mm -hmm. uh, we only have a couple of minutes here, but uh, could you tell us a little bit about the adult uh, volleyball program, uh, when registration start, starting with that? Sure. Um, our adult volleyball program will begin, we'll take registrations in January, um, and we transition immediately from that youth basketball program into our adult volleyball program, again, utilizing the Cottonwood Recreation Center gym space that we have. Um, last year we had um, enough teams for an A and a B league again. Um, we'll try and do the same this year. It's the adult co-ed volleyball is actually the one sport that I participate in as well and it just it seems to be a lot of fun for everybody. Um, uh, the, the competitiveness is there because it is a, it is a sport but uh, it's not overbearing, it's not overwhelming, it's really fun for everybody who participates. And what's the cost for a team? Um, sponsorship fees are three hundred dollars. That's our pretty much our standard rate for all of our um, costs. That covers uh, gym space and officiating, um, and then a fifteen dollar per player player fee, which will co cover the prizes and things like that. So, um, after a sponsorship fee, it's going to cost you fifteen dollars, which is going to be less than a dollar a game to play in our uh, adult co-ed volleyball program. That's phenomenal. Less than a dollar. Less than a dollar a game. Uh, when are games played? Uh, games twice a week, um, depending on which league you're in and depending on our format that we choose, we, we can, those can vary from year to year. But you'll play twice a week, um, either Mondays or Wednesdays or Tuesdays or Thursdays. Um, anywhere, uh, games will start at 6 o'clock. Our last game will begin at 8.15, so you'll play at 9 o'clock would be the latest you'd actually still be at the gym. We close the gym at 9, so um, uh, for those parents out there, uh, you can uh, bring your kids, have them watch the game, um, and then uh, be in bed by nine o'clock or nine thirty. Yeah, for uh, just for the audience, for those who maybe played, you know, eight nine years ago in the uh, small gymnasium at the uh, Mingus High School, we really appreciate uh, them allowing us to use it. But now that we have our own facility, we can play a lot earlier. That's correct, and and uh, that means it's more manageable for some of those people that uh, you know early early bedtime people, including myself. <laughs> I think we're all in that, uh, and well. People with kids anyway. Yeah. Uh, all right, controversial question. How do you break up that A and B league? 
Well, <laughs> I, I know I know this hits hits some people in the heart, um, but specifically for um, our our co-ed softball leagues, um, we we do everybody plays everybody once, and then um, we break it into A and B strictly by record. Um, when we're looking at volleyball, it's going to depend on how many teams we have signed up. We'll ask them to sign up for uh, a, a recreational league or a, a little bit more of a competitive league. Um, uh, depending on how many teams we get, it can be common to have two teams sign up for the competitive league and six <laughs> teams sign up for the uh, recreational league, which obviously doesn't make for fair competition. So. Um, in that sense, in that instance, we will have to come up with a tournament or a, or a format in which the play on the court determines who goes to the A and who goes to the B League. You got it right there, Brittany. It's the play on the court or the field. Anyway, uh, Ryan, I cannot thank you enough for being here today. Uh, very informative. I know you're two doors down, but we have so much going on. A lot of times we don't get to talk about specifics, so this was really nice to, uh, this, to hear the information again as well. I hope you guys found it informative. Uh, if you have any additional questions, the, number, the number's been up on the screen now uh, for, the, uh, for the show's entirety. That's 928-639-3200. Youth basketball sign-ups ongoing. Adult co-ed volleyball sign-ups start again when? January. Ryan, start in January. Uh, other than that, uh, Ryan Bigelow, or Bigelow at cottonwoodaz.gov if you'd like to volunteer or coach or maybe explore the uh, opportunity as it pertains to officiating. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next month.